Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Globecorp Prime Summit 640. So starting we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. On the sliding cargo door you do have a fly screen. And then there's a little switch here which operates the step so you can take it in and you can bring it out via the step. further back we've got your fresh water filler so this opens with the habitation key and you simply get a hose pipe put a hose pipe in there wait until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel above the door on the back you've got your high level brake light and then this customer has opted reverse sensors and a tow bar. So there's a tow bar on here with 13 pin electrics. Inside the back door is where you'll find your gas locker. So normally there would just be propane bottles on here, but this customer has asked for a gas flow system, which is refillable bottles to be fitted. So you've got one 13 and one six. On the top here you can see the levels, so we've put £20 worth of gas in here which has filled this one and nearly filled the big one. And then you've got a changeover valve so you can change between the bottles. So there's a little arrow here, so it's pointing to this one, turn it, it's pointing to that one. And then you turn on and off the bottles by the plus and the minus, minus obviously turns it off, plus turns them on on both and there's another one on this side of the bottle as well on the little six make sure they're turned off when you're on the road and when you arrive on site you can then turn them back on as it's more safe when traveling you'll notice in the load area you've got these tethering hooks to tie your load down and you've got your tool kit which is a jack and a brace and a toe and eye Underneath the vehicle is where the spare wheel lives and those tools there go on to this little lever here and you'll be able to wind the underslung wheel down to take it off to fit it if you needed it in an emergency. And then coming round, so this is the filler for the LPG system. So. You'd go to your local LPG centre, which is normally most petrol stations, service stations, you normally find them online. It's a bayonet fitting, so you'd use the filler, which looks like a gun. You'd turn the front of the filler nozzle to connect to the bayonet fitting of the vehicle, and then you'd pull the trigger back and then push the button on the display of the filler at the station and it'll fill until simply it won't take any more and that's when you'll know that the gas bottles are full. You've got this little key here which goes on and you can turn and this is your dirty water and then you'd put the key in the glove box or somewhere safe, don't leave it on there because you'll 10 times out of 10 it'll fall off. So put that somewhere safe, you don't want to lose that. And then above you've got your cassette now. So ensuring that the blade on the bottom ball of the toilet is in the closed position, which I'll show you from inside, you'll be able to lift the green lever here. And slide the cassette out. Got a handle there so you can wheel it when full to your waste disposal site, which is normally beside your toilet block on site. And then they're empty. Take the cap off. Press the button, just allows a bit of air in, keeps it flowing nicely, and tip out. Once you've tipped it out, 
there's then normally a tap there which you'd put some water down the neck of the spout put the cap on give it a rinse and tip out again then if you were using the liquid form of chemical you'd pour some liquid down the spout about 120 ml of liquid if you were using the tablets what you'd do is you'd put the cap back on put the cassette in completely dry then what you want to do is you'll want to open the blade on the inside of the toilet flush about a pint of water into the cassette followed by a green or a blue tablet the tablets are easier to store in the van as they don't take up too much space and most times the sites will probably want you to use the green tablets but ask when you are booking to what chemical we prefer you to use and then you'll be able to take the right ones with you here you have your vent for your Truma heater so your heater so the vent shows the location of the heater so inside it's underneath the two rear traveling seats which I'll show you when we're inside how to drain it down and things and then at the front you have your mains connectivity point so to connect the vehicle up get your hooker bleed expose the three pins connect connect to the main site and do it in reverse when unhooking but always hook the vehicle up first then the main, then the site as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead in your hand yeah. at the front you've got your diesel fill out opens with the main ignition case so you've got a lockable diesel cap and then below because it's a new euro 6 compliant engine it has the add blue solution so this is a 19 litre tank and from a full 19 litres you'll get five and a half thousand mile it will indicate when it needs add blue between the temperature and fuel gauge it will look like an exhaust light simply pulling to a petrol station then you can buy it on the pumps or you can buy it in the drums and top this up otherwise the vehicle can go into limp mode and fail to start if the add blue goes completely dry on the inside of the passenger doors where you'll find your tyre pressures, so 5.5 bar which is 79.5 psi all around. Underneath the passenger seat is where you'll find your leisure battery. Underneath the cab floor is where you'll find your engine battery. And then on the side of the passenger dashboard is where you'll find your bonnet release. Having a look underneath the bonnet, you've got your screen wash, this lifts off and you've got your power steering fluid and your radiator coolant, brake fluid, engine oil filler and dipstick, paint code for the Grigio Ferrero which is 691. Then if you were wanting to jump start the vehicle, you'd earth off here and then just underneath this cover, so put a screwdriver or your key in here, lift this up behind the passenger headlight, this is where your, your positive is for giving or receiving a jump start. At the back, so your fresh water fillers on the other side of the vehicle, if you lift the mattress and the bed base, there's a little cover here which you lift off and this is your fresh water tank. To drain, you'd use this little winder here and it tells you on here, so two times is open, three quarters position leaves 20 litres. So if you are traveling from a full tank to 20 litres, obviously 20 litres will not take as much weight as a full tank of water. And it still means that you can use the toilet and have a cup of tea if you're on a long journey. But when draining down for the winter, you turn it all the way to the left and you'll see the water come out underneath the vehicle. So you'd only drain it down if you are leaving it for the winter. Obviously you'd want the waste and the fresh to be completely dry and you'd open the boiler, which I'll show you how to do further on in the video. Or if you've taken on contaminated water, but if you are wanting to be a little bit lighter for better fuel consumption or you wanted to carry more items on board turn it three quarters and you'll be able to leave 20 litres in 
if you wanted to use the toilet or stop and have a break and have a cup of tea. So above the sliding habitation door, you've got your main 12 volt control panel. So if you hooked up, you'll get this little indication here that looks like a hookup plug, which means you've got 240 volts on board. If you didn't have that, you will just have 12 volt off the leisure battery. And then to operate the panel, turn on and off via this button here. So this will turn on the 12 volt or the 240 volt if you hooked up or not. Then you put the buttons around it. So you can turn your 12 volt on, which is this one here, which is 12 volt on and off. You can turn your pump on if you are using the taps to pressurize the water. And then you've got this little snowflake here, which turns the fridge on. So you must have this on to then operate the fridge. Otherwise it won't send any power down to the fridge, which I'll show you in a minute. Three buttons here, fresh water, 60%. Leisure battery, 14.5 volts. Obviously we're hooked up at the moment, take the hook about to get a true reading. Click again, it then goes to the truck, which is the Fiat engine battery of 13.9 volts. And then you've got your temperature here, so you've got the inside temperature of 21 degrees and the external temperature of 17 degrees. To operate your Dometic fridge, this is just a 12 volt compression fridge. So making sure that the snowflake button is on to work the fridge from the control panel above the door. You can see it's just a 12 volt compressor fridge because it's got the battery setting. And then if you click on here, you've got your temperature so you can go up and down to determine which temperature setting you want it on. Obviously if you're pre-chilling you probably want it on full then when you get your shopping you might just want to turn it down a bar or two so it doesn't freeze the shopping. It opens from the left hand side and you've got your freezer box when you finish with it for the season, if you're not using it for a couple of weeks or you're putting it away for the winter, take everything out of your fridge, give it a clean out, and then what you want to do is you just want to leave the door in the open position. Putting it in the closed position, it'll trap all the air inside the fridge, and then it'll start to grow more. In the kitchen area, you've got two gas burner hob. So once you've used them, ensure that they are cool enough to touch before you put the glass lid down, otherwise you can shatter it. And then you do have the tap there, so ensure that the pump's on, otherwise it'll just start to dribble out like so. Put the pump on and that will pressurise itself. And then that water's getting nice and warm there as the hot water system's on. To open all the cupboards, which are the overhead cupboards, there's a little button behind that you need to push down to release the travel catch, and then you do have storage above. 240 volt socket, and a 12 volt point. storage, cutlery tray, some more storage and then you just push the catches in to lock the door in place when traveling and then you've got another storage drawer below. Thermostats for the Truma heating and hot water system and then in the back of the vehicle, you've got two single beds, lengthways or across the vehicle, widthways, you've got a double bed. So it's up to you how you choose to use the beds. Storage underneath the steps here with the carpets. This does all come apart 
if you wanted to put a larger item inside the vehicle so you would just use the wing nuts here to release all the steps and then that would just lift out the back and the bases would just come off as well so you can put your bikes in or whatever you want to carry on board the back of the vehicle the little reading lights so to work these you've got if you touch the switch there you've got the night time setting which is your night light otherwise you can make the main bezel come on if you touch again switch for the lights above and you've got storage these are the infill cushions for the front bed which i'll get onto in a moment but underneath this side if you lift this up you've got a wardrobe and moving the carpet first to open the door you've got a small wardrobe in here as well in the washroom slash toilet so to operate the toilet first as long as the pumps on you'll be able to press this button here which is your flush flush the toilet first to lubricate the blade and then to use it you want to use it with the blade slightly open to make sure that it all goes into the cassette so to open the blade just pull it forward so if you just pull it forward slightly and leave it ajar you can then use the toilet or you can use it with the blade completely open so the blade doesn't get messed up once you've used the toilet if you flush after use again by just pressing the button and then slide this in which closes the blade which then isolates the cassette and you can get it out the outside of the vehicle when it's ready to empty which it'll tell you here when it is ready to empty make sure the blade's closed you'll be able to get it out empty and then top up with chemical above you've got toiletry cabinet and then this skylight which is the same as the one over the bed you just press the button in slide the bar open all the way up put into the two little grooves here so you can get a nice bit of ventilation and then you do have a fly screen for when it's open and a blackout blind always make sure it's closed though which is the but the bar above the button and the buttons fully popped out before you travel because you can't travel with these open 12 volt point your lights your washroom is heated as you've got a concertina door here and then if you want to put in the shower in position simply pull the handle that'll clip back on a magnet on the floor to protect the toilet from when you're showering and then you can use the shower when winterizing though if you leave all the taps open throughout the vehicle so you'd use the hand basin tap open you'd leave the kitchen tap open you'd leave the shower tap open remove your shower head from the hose and allow the hose so you pull this out allow this to lie in the tray take the mat out any water that's potentially in this pipe could freeze so that's why you would pull it out and you'd lie it down so that all the water would dribble out through the waste system and it, the waste would be open anyway so it would just drain straight out the vehicle so underneath the traveling seats on the side there you've got your trips on mains electric your fuses on 12 volts it would be a good idea to carry some spare fuses and you've got your charger which you don't need to do anything with just make sure it's on and leave it and that'll charge the engine battery and habitation battery which is your leisure battery when you are hooked up but it would be a good idea to carry some spare fuses just in case they do blow they're just standard blade fuses so removing the base cushion from the travelling seats is where the location of your boiler is so if you lift the panel up your boiler is here so it obviously heats the vehicle and heats the water the water container inside the boiler is 10 litres so it's very important in the winter when you're not using the vehicle you drain it down because if that 10 litres freezes it will crack the cylinder and then that's the boiler not covered under warranty as frost protection is not covered and it's very expensive to replace this boiler so to drain it down just behind this pipe here you'll see 
the blue tab. On that device, it's called an anti-frost control device. So at three degrees, it'll automatically drop the water. But I would never rely on it because if it becomes faulty and you've relied on it, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So always check it. So to drain off, when it's across the vehicle like so, and the button on the bottom is pushed in, it's holding water. Turn it. So it goes front to back. You'll see at the bottom there, the button's popped out. This is then allowing the 10 litres of water to drain directly out underneath the chassis. When you come to reuse it, turn it, push the button in, shut all the taps throughout the vehicle, fill the vehicle with water via a hose pipe, come in, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water through the tap, and then on the hot side, when you get a free flow of hot water this indicates that the vehicle spoiler is pressurized so don't be alarmed if it coughs splutters it's when you get a free flow of hot water from the hot tap the vehicle is pressurized for the season and then you would do every other tap and it shouldn't take much longer. But always remember to drain this down, otherwise it's not covered under warranty. And you would do it via the anti-frost control, which is just down here. So when you get the vehicle, have a good look, because it's hard to fill them with all the pipes in the way, but it's just down here. And then you'll also notice on this vehicle, it's fitted with a solar panel, because there's a solar panel regulator. So it's just doing its own thing. Leave it to it, and it'll charge the habitation battery as long as the sun is shining. So in the summer, great. In the winter, it'll be all right on the sunnier winter days. So to make the front third occasional bed, make sure these two buttons are pushed down. If they're pushed up, that means it is locked on the bar, so they need to be pushed down. And then what you would do is you would lift the table off. And as you're lifting the table off, if you just Slide this leg off. Lift it on the bottom bar, like so, and rest it there. And then using the board that was found in the garage, so the funny shape, you would push this in between the two tables. In, pull the board, the board out, give it a tap to make sure it's nice and secure in, in the table. Like it is there. And then you use the infill cushions. One on there. The other one on there. And there you have a single third occasional bed. So to work the Avtex TV, Make sure the power's on. Then there's a master button, so make sure that is pushed in, which will bring on the red light. Using the remote, press on. And then each time you move site, you will have to retune the TV by pressing AQT. Press and hold, so there we've got a signal. AQT, press and hold, orange button, It'll start to do a channel search and it'll find as many channels as it can. The telly does have two HDMI ports. It is satellite ready if you ever fitted a satellite to the vehicle. And then in the cupboard above, you've got your TV booster of your Maxi Aerial so you can just use the black wheel there to lower the signal should it be too strong or boost it should it be too weak. And then they have also opted for a sat nav. So sat nav's in the box there. There's a lead on the dash, which it just clips to, and then clips to the windscreen as it's hardwired. If you use the skylight above the dinette, it's all on a winder. You just wind it open, wind it closed. When you get the red line, means it's closed, so you just 
clip the winding handle back into position and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the doors you've got your electric windows for driver and passenger and then your electric mirror adjustment so there's two mirrors each side so there's the top one which is your big one and there's the bottom one which is your blind spot which can all be adjusted electronically through the, this button to black the side windows out you've got remis carb lane so pinch and slide you'll be able to black driver and passenger doors out for an on an evening and then bring this up little adjustment on there and you can black the windscreen out on an evening as well got exactly the same on this big skylight which opens the same as that one winder must be shut when traveling and then down to the right you've got your headlight adjustment your rear fog lights and if you want your auto stop start to not operate you can turn it off but because this customer has had reverse sensors fitted with there being a tow bar on and if they were towing anything the reverse sensors when in reverse would put you off when towing so there's a little handy switch here which turns the sensors on you can hear the boop there and off so you can have them on when you want them when not towing and when you've got anything on like a bike rack or you are towing you can turn them off white vest oak with trip computer on the end which goes through the screen in the middle it'll tell you average and instant consumption your range your traveling times and your distance traveled lights and indicators and then you've got off top one's cruise control which brings on the green light then you would just push up to set push up to speed up pull down to slow down you can cancel with a foot brake or cancel on the end of the stalk and press resume to the last speed set before the engine was turned off then you've got speed limit at the bottom so you can push up slowly goes up in ones push and hold goes up in fives and it'll tell you in the top left hand corner it'll say limb off and it'll tell you the speed below once the engine's running and you've set that the limiter will start working all your steering wheel controls this is a nine speed automatic paired with the engine upgrade of 160 brake as they normally come as 140 but the 160 does make a difference even in this small van so you've got park reverse neutral drive and then to the left you can go up and down the gears drive mode just goes between power eco and normal i would just leave it in normal there's no real benefit to eco it just drops the revs down a little bit to save a little bit of fuel but you do have the kick down function on normal so if you were wanting to get going you can just put your foot down it'll drop the gear and it will start to move a bit quicker power just holds the revs more if you were towing or if you were on a steep hill you can use power just to hold the rev hold the gear and get away traction control on and off hill descent control with it being an automatic hazards padlock locks the doors with it being a van conversion and you do have heated mirrors usb for charging and 12 volt there cup holders Temperature on the outside ring, fan speed on the in must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is this one here. And then you've got your distribution on the outside ring, so face, feet, screen, demist, whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air within the cab. It's fitted with a black punk radio, so you can turn on and off here. Go by, it says, and then it'll come back on. You press 1 to 5 to save your favourite channels and you can scroll through them by here. You've got a 3.5 mm aux jack or a USB. It does take a CD. Press an SRC, it'll skip between FM1, FM2, DAB. And then you can scroll through your DAB channels. depending on if this has got a DAB aerial fitted 
obviously a CD, it would recognise a CD there and a USB if it was to be connected. Can remove the head unit and take it out for when you're leaving the vehicle unattended. Push the right hand side in first and then the left hand and it'll go back in and start working. Glove box. This glove box on the top is heated and cooled by the air conditioning. And then to swivel the seats, there's a little lever here. Pull that and you'll be able to turn the seat round. If the seat was to get caught, you would just adjust the front sliding position. So back and forth, the driving position, and it'll be able to spin into the back. And that's the same with the driver's seat.